Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst restaurants to be featured on Kitchen Nightmares and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Bella Luna For a season 7 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Bella Luna in eastern Pennsylvania to rescue it from closure. Owned by Rosario Scolo, she purchased the restaurant in 2010 with the help of her two sons Maurizio and Gianfranco. While Maurizio works as the bar manager, his brother Gianfranco took on the position of head chef after graduating from culinary school. Sadly, all the food they put out isn't fresh and tastes dreadful which is why a lot of the customers complain and send it back. Most of the staff hate the dining room's decor since it looks like a morgue and they believe that the management is terrible at leading. With little to no options left, the owners decided to call out to Ramsay and his team for some help. Upon his eventual arrival, the famous chef meets with Rosaria, who admits to opening a restaurant with no experience whatsoever. Sitting down to taste test the food, Ramsay is given several different menus and orders a collection of dishes. Everything he receives is either bland, overcooked, drowned in sauce, or tastes dreadful, leaving him feeling disappointed. Most notably, the mussels marinara dish that he ordered clearly made use of frozen mussels, which angered him deeply. Storming into the kitchen to confront the staff about his piss poor meals, especially the mussels, Gianfranco tells Ramsay that they're forced to use frozen ingredients since many of the items they offer aren't purchased that often. Inspecting the walk-in freezer later on, the Kitchen Nightmares host finds containers filled with frozen chicken, calamari, and mussels. Showing this to the owner, she claims that they buy everything fresh but eventually freeze it since they're unable to use it all when it's fresh. Additionally, she seems to not have a problem with using frozen food despite the fact that they advertise cooking meals from scratch. As Ramsay continues to investigate the kitchen, he finds tons of moldy produce, grey veal, and rotten turnip which disgusts him. Scolding the kitchen staff for letting the place fall to such a state, things get even worse when hair is discovered in a dish that was about to be served. Forcing the owners to shut the restaurant down and send the customers home, Ramsay brings them aside to have a chat. Convinced that the owners have given up on the restaurant, the famous chef threatens to leave but Gianfranco highlights that he wants things to change which motivates Ramsay to stay. Fast forward to the end of the episode after Ramsay gets the Bella Luna team to wake up, it was finally time to give the place a makeover. After revamping the dining room, providing the place with better equipment, reducing the menu size, and creating fresh new recipes, the restaurant's future was actually seeming bright. Post Kitchen Nightmares, Bella Luna's sales increased threefold, but due to issues with the landlord, the owners were forced to shut things down. According to the landlord's daughter, however, they actually closed down since they hadn't paid rent in months. The business was also rumored to have been selling alcohol with an expired license, but this was never really proven. Anyway, the owners announced that they would be reopening in another location, but this never happened. Chappies In a season 6 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Chappies in Nashville, Tennessee to bring it back on its feet. Owned by John Chappie Chapman and his wife Star, they originally opened the restaurant in Long Beach but were forced to relocate after Hurricane Katrina destroyed everything. Due to the move, the business has suffered greatly, but Chappie places the blame on the locals who supposedly don't understand Cajun cuisine. Aside from the fact that the food is clearly bad since many people send it back, the staff think that the owner sucks at managing and has an ego problem. The owner is so fragile that he kicked a customer out for making a complaint about a salad. How ridiculous. On the verge of closure, the owner decided to call out to Ramsay for some professional guidance. When he finally arrives, Ramsay notices that there's a creepy mannequin dressed in a Mardi Gras costume at the entrance. Meeting with Chappie, he tells the famous chef that his restaurant is casual even though it has a formal setup and rates his food 10 out of 10. Sitting down to sample the food, Ramsay scans the large menus and orders several Cajun dishes. Getting some fried green tomatoes that taste bland, gumbo that's watery and cold, as well as some steak and lobster that are tough and chewy, Ramsay is left with the worst first impression. Giving his feedback to Chappie on his awful meals, he seems to have excuses for everything and doesn't acknowledge the possibility that his food is just bad. Observing the dinner service later on, Ramsay notices that they have an open pot of oysters kept at room temperature. What's more, the famous chef watches as the kitchen staff cook a steak in the same pan as a fish for a pescatarian and is shocked to find out that Chappie hasn't heard of what one is. To help the clueless owner understand, Ramsay brings him over to the pescatarian customer who explains that she only eats fish and that meat makes her sick. Inspecting the fridge later on, the Kitchen Nightmares host finds lukewarm seafood, spoiled meat, and mold in the corners. What's worse is Ramsay inspects the kitchen even further, he finds mayonnaise that expired 3 years ago, food that's rotting, and cooked meat stored next to raw meat. Leaving and returning the following day, Ramsay holds a staff meeting and it's revealed that Chappie is condescending, rude, and doesn't listen to feedback. Surprisingly, the owner seems to apologize for his actions, which is great and all, but the staff are skeptical that he's being sincere. Putting his new attitude to the test, Ramsay brings in some locals who have a lot of criticisms in regards to the food. They highlight that the restaurant food quality is very low, it's overpriced, and that the atmosphere is drab. Shocked by what they were hearing, the owners finally admitted that things needed to change, which was a step in the right direction. 
overnight, Ramsey and his team modernized the dining room by brightening up the walls and adding beautiful decor. Additionally, since the menu was way too large, the famous chef brought the number of items down to 22 from 100. Considering the fact that Chappie described the business as casual in the beginning of the episode, Ramsey decided to make new casual uniforms for the staff. Fast forward to a few weeks after Ramsey had left, the owner decided to revert all the changes made despite the positive feedback. Chappie was actually interviewed on several occasions, claiming that the Kitchen Nightmares team wrecked his business since they made false promises. Aside from scrapping all of Ramsey's work, Chappie's was bound to fail since they were avoiding paying taxes, which is why they were ultimately seized by the state. On two other occasions, Chappie opened Chappie's Bistro and Chappie's at 616, which both closed down after a year. His most recent venture is Rum Kitchen, which he opened in April of 2016, and it actually has good reviews. Down City As our final entry, we're going to cover a restaurant that Gordon Ramsay attempted to rescue called Down City. Owned by Abby Cabral and her best friend Rico Conforti, they purchased the place back in 2005. Sadly, they're having difficulty getting customers through the door, and the owners seem to have no clue why. According to some of the staff, Cabral is the biggest problem since she's a bossy person who always wants things to go her way. Considering that the place was months away from closing down, the owners called out to Ramsey for some aid. Upon his eventual arrival, the famous chef meets with Cabral who reveals that she doesn't know how to cook at all. After revealing that he just got back from the hotel next door and that he had a horrible experience with room service, Ramsey is shocked to find out that the service was provided by Down City. Describing what he ate as cold, disgusting, and an embarrassment to cooking, Cabral refuses to agree with his criticisms. Hoping to compare what he just ate to the food in the restaurant, Ramsey orders a couple dishes from the menu. Getting three-way nachos that tasted like a funeral in his mouth, meatloaf that was lukewarm and solid, and calamari that was soggy, Ramsey was left feeling appalled. Meeting with the owner soon after, he tells her that the food he ate was revolting and that it was just as bad as his room service. We're not sure why he'd expect anything else, but whatever. Anyway, Ramsey later finds out that they don't have a head chef in the kitchen, which is why their food lacks consistency. Asking who came up with the menu, it's revealed to be Cabral who, as we mentioned, has no experience with cooking whatsoever. An hour before the next dinner service, Ramsey meets with Conforti who tells him that the business is close to a million dollars in debt and desperately needs to change. Wanting to see the place in action so he could take note of what needs fixing, Ramsey observes the dinner service. Not only were the dishes constantly being sent back, but when the Kitchen Nightmares host inspects the restaurant's nasty fridge, things get pretty heated. After showing both Cabral and Conforti how filthy the refrigerator was, Cabral gets irate and orders Ramsey to leave, so he does just that. Desperately chasing after the famous chef, Conforti tells him that he doesn't want to give up on the restaurant. Giving them one final chance, Ramsey reminds the owners that he can't rebuild the restaurant if they aren't honest with him. Agreeing that things need to change, Cabral promises that she'll go along with anything that Ramsey decides to do. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the restaurant's sales shut up by 30% and they finally gave the head chef position to someone named Jimmy. When Ramsey revisited months later, he took a look at the fridge and was impressed to find it completely organized. Unfortunately though, only a year after the episode aired, the restaurant closed down in December of 2011. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!